Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today as we discuss employee relief funds. Here to present on this webinar are myself, Ewan Nune, Grants and Funds Specialist, Carol Bradford, Senior Legal Counsel and Charitable Advisor, and Emily Zilo, Grants and Fund Operations Manager. During the presentation, feel free to ask questions by typing your question in the dialog box, and we will try to respond as we go. So the reason for today's webinar is that we wanted to bring together our employer-sponsored relief funds to go over the general requirements and share best practices in how to administer these funds. So let's begin by discussing a little background on these types of funds first. Employer-sponsored relief funds are established generally at a 501c3 public charity like the California Community Foundation for the purpose of providing one-time grants to employees and their family members who are victims of a qualified disaster or emergency hardship. Such a fund enables employers to provide quick one-time relief to its employees while maintaining a charitable purpose for tax purposes by working with a public charity. Essentially, this preserves the tax benefit for both the employer and employee if certain criteria are met. CCF currently houses nine employee relief funds with over two and a half million in combined assets. These funds have made 700 grants totaling over 3.8 million to employees in need due to disasters or personal hardship. Now let's discuss how employee relief funds work. On this slide, these are the roles for those generally involved in administering the fund. CCF's role is to ensure that the fund purpose and criteria are in accordance with IRS guidelines, approve the recommended committee, and provide due diligence to ensure the committee's approved recommendations fall within IRS guidelines. The employer's role is to work with CCF to establish proper criteria and structure for the fund, provide a liaison to work with the employer's staff, to promote the fund and ensure all employees are properly aware of the fund, and to coordinate receipt of application and supporting documentation and provide to committee for review. Lastly, the committee's role is to review employee applications and supporting materials and approve or decline the request. Selection of the committee will be discussed later in the presentation. And Carol will now speak a little more about the employer's role in promoting the fund among its employee base. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I hope, I hope you'll find that this information is helpful as we continue to work together on your fund. So we often get questions about the promotion of the fund, um, because at the end of the day, these funds are really being created or have been created to provide benefits. Hmm, maybe that's not the right word, but to provide, provide relief and provide support to your own employees. And I am sure, and I know we've had many discussions over, over the years with these funds um, with you, um, that you really want employees to know about the funds so that they can apply for relief when the terrible things happen that happen to all of us in our lives. So for the funds, um, the employer is responsible for promoting the fund within its employee base in making the criteria for application and, and uh, selection accessible. If you think about it, that makes perfect sense. You know the best way to put information out to your employees to make sure that they see it, to make sure that their managers see it, and uh, get employees to apply when things happen. The employer's role is key because for funds like this, there needs to be a large group of potential uh, applicants or, or, or people who can uh, 
who can get benefit from or support from such a fund, that's how it retains uh, its charitable purpose. It's also really important to ensure that the fund is not being used to recruit or induce employees to continue employment. And the reason for that is that the service wants to make sure that employees don't think of this fund as part of their benefits, because benefits are taxable, and benefits have to be declared in income. So this, sets, this sits outside of that particular part of the employee experience such that um, grants made to employees for, in, for emergency or uh, emergency hardship or emergency situations are not taxable and they don't count in the uh, income that you have to um, put or recognize on W-2s for your, for your employees or, or 1099s. So for contributions into the employee relief funds, they can be made many ways. As many of you know, contributions made directly to individuals for assistance are not tax deductible. So if I have a friend or family member who has fallen on hard times and you know really needs help from me, if I was to make a contribution to them, I couldn't take a tax deduction for that. However, contributions that come from a public charity to an individual that's part of a large, undefined, un, uh, un, uh, uh, a group that is not pre-selected are generally tax deductible. So for contributions into the employee funds, they can be made on a one-time basis by check, on a one-time basis or a continuing basis uh, via credit card through a general portal or customized online giving page, or they can be made through a payroll deduction. So for contributions coming in via check or credit card, a direct contribution to the fund coming to CCF. Uh, CCF is uh, responsible for taking care of the gift acknowledgement for those contributions so that your employees would have that for tax purposes. A little bit different for payroll deductions. Payroll deductions are handled at the employer level. They are sent to us in some form. I know many of you are bundling them and sending us a, uh, a check. And we are not, we at CCF are not doing an acknowledgement when the money comes in for this reason. Under the Treasury regulations, if I am making charitable contributions into a fund such as this, um, all I have to do to declare those deductions or declare those contributions uh, on my tax form is identify the amount and have um, a, a, a single piece of paper. More often than not, it is a uh, 1099 or a W-2 that shows how much money has been taken out of my paycheck over the year uh, through payroll deductions. Great. Thanks, Carol. This is Emily Zietlow, and I'm going to talk a little bit about distributions out of the employee relief funds. And so, as, as Carol's talked about and Lynn as well, these funds are very much uh, established with um, a lot of guidelines and procedures in mind to make sure, A, that contributions into the fund can be considered tax deductible for donors, as well as, as we'll talk about now, we want to make sure that the way the fund set up allows for the distributions out of the fund not to be considered taxable income for employees. Um, we don't want them to be subject to any employment taxes or withholding, but to be considered fully charitable gifts that the employee doesn't need to include in their gross income for the year. Um, so what are distributions that align with this? Um, essentially, payments received under a charitable program as a result of a disaster or hardship are considered gifts. And what we're really looking for in terms of gifts versus um, distributions that could be considered taxable income is uh, that they fall outside of the pattern of compensation. And so we'll talk a lot about the nature of um, 
the disaster or hardship um, in place as being one time rather than perhaps ongoing needs that an employee might have that the fund is trying to meet. Um, the IRS considers whether or not the charity intended the payment to be a gift and was motivated by charitable impulses rather than some sort of an obligation or a return for services for the employee. Um, in those cases, it could be considered income rather than a gift. So we're really looking to make, sure, make certain that um, the distributions out of these funds will be considered in the charitable gift category so employees aren't taxed on them. So what are some examples of distributions that, um, that fall in this realm? Um, all, not all of our funds here are alike. Um, almost all of our funds here include the disaster relief component. Various um, procedures and guidelines established for different funds may also include um, an opportunity to um, support employees that are um, encountering some sort of emergency hardship as well. Um, but it, uh, this is kind of the broad realm that, that all funds may support. Um, so namely disaster relief um, assistance should be limited to qualified disaster relief payments, um, presidentially declared disasters, disasters um, that the Secretary of Treasury is considered catastrophic, um, or disasters resulting from some sort of terroristic or military action. Um, those are kind of widespread disaster relief um, occurrences that may warrant the distribution that can be considered a charitable gift. Um, emergency hardship is a somewhat broader category, um, but generally we're looking to see that um, the event that occurred was outside of the um, employee's control and again is a one-time event that's led to some sort of hardship for that employee. It may be that a crime has occurred, a personal um, disaster such as a fire um, or some sort of um, other loss or one-time event that's happened to cause this, um, this need. And again, then the distributions that we make are to help um, the employees and provide assistance with them during this specific point in time, um, rather than, again, an ongoing support that, that could be construed as income. Um, we're really hoping that the assistance helps them, help them um, with temporary relief to meet their basic necessities during this, um, this event or perhaps convergence of events. Um, types of assistance that may fall in this category include um, support for personal um, living expenses or family expenses, perhaps funeral expenses and the loss of um, a family member, cost of repair, um, and again, all to help an employee meet basic needs at a certain point in time and not to replace lost income um, or, or supplement income in any way. And so these are kind of the things that are eligible. What requirements are we really looking at holistically to make sure that distribution, these distributions um, qualify as charitable gifts and not in any way as taxable income? Um, a lot of this is established at the, the onset of the fund, and so we're looking to make sure that the guidelines of the fund and the application um, really aligns with, with the following things. That the fund serves a charitable class. Um, Carol spoke to that a little bit. Um, while restricted to the employees of a particular employer, um, it must be an indefinite and open application um, that all employees of the, the uh, corporation can be eligible to apply for. Um, and then furthermore, though, employment is the initial qualifier and, and kind of defines the class. Um, the application and selection process is really a step beyond that. And the factors in the application and selection process are, again, looking back at what event or um, situation has occurred to cause the hardship and that there is a hardship that can um, be met by a charitable gift from this fund to again help meet the basic needs of, of that employee. Um, we're looking as well at, at um, financial need, so it doesn't necessarily have to mean that an employee is completely destitute, um, but that some sort of um, you know, need exists because of what has occurred for that employee. Um, <laughs> Finally, we're looking at the makeup of the committee. Um, we speak a lot about it being an independent selection committee. That doesn't necessarily mean entirely independent of the corporation, but it does mean that the individual, individuals that comprise the selection committee are, are independent of the potential recipients. They're not directly supervising or controlling them um, and, and don't have the potential to really influence the employees, potential recipient employees' daily affairs. 
And so as we kind of move into the realm of actually making these distributions, we're thinking about documentation and then, of course, the approval processes. A lot of the documentation that we receive is, is usually outlined in the applications that we've established for these funds at, at the creation of, of your employer relief um, funds. And so your application will include information that, um, such as what uh, a description of what has occurred and what the basic needs of the employee are because of, of what has occurred, um, costs associated, and um, what, what they're experiencing. They may also outline their um, family's annual income or their household's annual income um, to give some perspective on the fact that they are, they are having some trouble meeting basic needs because of what has occurred. Um, applications may also outline where the, how the employee fits within the organization. Perhaps they're at a certain branch and perhaps they had a nominating manager that, um, that let them know about the fund and the opportunity there and, and hopefully, again, all managers are, are trained in, in the uh, awareness of the fund and how it operates. Um, in addition to basics like name and address, um, amount that they're requesting, um, all of these things we, are usually outlined on the application and then substantiated by some extra documentation that definitely varies based on the um, event or occurrence in question. For a fire, we may perhaps have um, some sort of an insurance report outlining that. Um, perhaps for um, a death in the family, we'll have an obituary um, or for a crime, perhaps a police report something to substantiate what has occurred. Similarly, with um, looking at the individual's need, we may receive pay stubs that kind of substantiate the income that they've um, cited on their application and, and shows the current need that they, they have. Um, and so all those things are preliminarily there for the committee's approval. And so um, all of that should be documentation that the committee wants to see and review so that they can determine first that there is a one-time need um, for this employee and that a charitable gift from the fund can then make, um, make that employee able to meet, meet basic needs at this point in time. And as the committee reviews all of that, um, they approve or decline. Perhaps there are questions involved. Usually I think um, all of our funds do this via email, which I think is a, a preferred method. Um, because then it becomes easy for the foundation to subsequently receive the documentation package that the committee members reviewed, uh, as well as the email exchanges that show the committee's discussion and approval. And so our final uh, review and approval is looking at all this that the committee has reviewed and uh, their process, and then ultimately um, ensuring that the entire process and approval package align with what we know our fund guidelines as well as, of course, IRS guidelines. And so that's um, a lot of our information about our, or a lot of general information about our employer relief funds. We know each one has some specifics also in how it's established. Um, we'd love to um, open up to questions that you may have either on contributions into the fund, distributions out, or overall function. Um, there is a chat feature on the webinar tool that you may be able to use to post chat questions, um, and we can we can relay them to the group and, and um, respond to them if, if you have any. So feel free to do that at this time. So Emily, this is Carol. You know, in thinking about this, um, I, I think one of it's my sense that one of the nice things about uh, a fund like this is that it is set up. The criteria is set up. When an emergency arises, the employee can pull together the information pretty quickly, and if the, the committee can get on it as quickly as they can. And then it, it's a pretty quick turnaround, isn't it, for for distributions to go out to employees? Absolutely. So at the point in time when the foundation receives information from the committee, the documentation they approved, and their approval, um, checks usually are able to be ready within four to six business days. Um, and we we do offer in cases of extreme emergency to to send a, a FedEx check as well. Um, given just the nature of some of these events. And so if there is extreme timing issues, we, we do offer that as well. Um, 
but a check will generally be ready within four to six business days and can be sent to the employee directly or if perhaps their, um, their living situation is being covered by this event, we can also send to the, the store at which they work um, so that they can receive that check and, and those funds. We'll just go over um, our, our contacts here for you and, and unless there are any um, remaining questions. Um, again, I'm Emily Zilo. I'm the Grants and Fund Operations Manager here. And so myself and UN, our Grants and Fund Operations Specialist, will um, always be managing the distributions out of the fund and ensuring that those uh, are, are done in that four to six business day time frame um, and, and that we have all the required documentation on file for all of our distributions. Um, Carol Bradford is our senior, senior legal counsel and helps establish a lot of these funds and ensure that the, the way in which the fund is established and the criteria that we have and the guidelines that we have in place are really in line with, with these IRS regulations that allow these funds to exist, basically. Uh, we also have Stephanie Talavera on the call, who maybe um, for a lot of your funds is the direct liaison and, and helps, um, you know, uh, answer a lot of your general questions about the fund. and um, and how it may operate. And she's our development and donor relations specialist at the foundation. So any one of us is always open to questions you may have or to working with you to ensure that um, the employer room fund you have at CCF is, is operating efficiently and that all your questions are answered. So if there are no more questions, I think we'll wrap up the webinar. Um, it has been recorded and so We'll make it available to our different contacts, um, the visual and the audio, for sharing with other people at your organization. Or in the case of turnover or shifting of roles, you'll have it as well for, for sharing for future, um, uh, future collaborators on the fund. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>